Hello, Bookish Brits, my name is Andrew, and today I have two things to do. The first is this video, which is a tag, and the second one is giving you guys a quick announcement. If you are guys are going to Yelk, I might be there on Sunday. I think you guys probably know the news from Twitter. I might be doing a panel or a workshop about blogging. Do I look like the person who knows anything about blogging? <laughs> but yeah, if, if you're going if you're going to Yelk, come. Come, I'm on the Sunday, I do believe. Okay, that's it. That's all I'm going to tell you. <laughs> I might tell you more at the time, but I thought I'll just give you a heads up that if you've got tickets to Yelk, there's still time to get a refund. <laughs> anyway, I am doing this proper video, which is the Extraordinary Means book tag. Now, I was tagged by George from George Bester. Yeah, that is how you say your surname, isn't it, mate? I'm mate. When all, when all Essex are mate. Um... And this video is created by Robin Schneider. Schne Hang on. Robin Schneider, who is the author of Seven Heads, Broken Hearts, and her new book, Extraordinary Means. So you have no idea how many times I've watched that YouTube video just to get that name right. And you end up just like, just put the phone on the computer, just record it with him saying it. So, voice intro from him. So there are six questions, and this is to show you the extraordinary means you would go to get a book. Now you are on my laptop, and I can't. Scroll! I need to see the questions! I need to see the questions! Okay, there are six in total, and I'm a bit frightened, because yesterday when I met George at a, a book event, and I, and I did actually ask him, can I just have one answer for all of these questions? And the answer was, no. <laughs> you can't have one author, you can't have one book. So it was like, damn. Oh well, let's get started, shall we? Uh, question one is, I would give up the internet for a month, a month, good god, <laughs> for a signed first edition of this book. Okay. Really? Really? I, this is my first edition of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. It is extremely battered and bruised. I'm so sorry. My cat has just decided to jump up and sniff the laptop, so you might see a paw walk across the screen. <laughs> um, as you can see, first edition, my first baby. You know, battered, bruised, folded to pieces. I, it's a first edition and it's destroyed. I was a, I was eleven or twelve. Why, why would I keep care of a book? So yes, I would be assigned UK hardback first edition of Harry Potter and Philosopher's Stone. Although I do have a signed first edition of The Casual Vacancy. So, yeah, let's go for this one. Although someone, I did watch a video where someone did say well, a signed first edition of Jane Eyre. Can you imagine how much money that would cost if you put it at auction? At auction, yeah, it'd be insane. Question two is, I would give up pizza for a year if it meant sitting next to this author on the long plane ride. Now this is really difficult because this, I would have normally said Jake Rowling. Every question bar one, I would say Jake and Rowling. But this one, sorry, my cat's now gone incredibly hard and now playing at my feet. So trying not, I'm trying to keep him away from the potters. Uh, but it's very, very difficult. There's a lot of authors I want to sit on a long plane to because I could just sit and grill them. But I think I want to go on a plane ride which I would just enjoy. So the one I would go for, and this is because of yesterday, is Zoe Marriott. The amount of information in that woman's brain. Like literally, yesterday I was chatting to her after um, she did her little talk about the third and final book in this series which I love, and she, you can literally just wind her up, set her on a subject, a subject matter, and watch her go. She would make the flight so much more fun, because you would talk about stuff, you would write, you would grill, I would grill about mythology. I mean, she was, she was me a walking, talking, so I could read about mythology, <laughs> and that would be so much fun. Question three is, I would sit through a thousand hours of commercials, if it would ensure that Hollywood would make this book into a movie. This is a no-brainer. This is such a no-brainer. It is Sabriel by Gareth Nix. If you get the right producers, the right director, the right scriptwriter, oh my god, this would be so awesome. Question four is, I would never read a new book again if it meant I could live inside this world. Again. Do I really need to explain? Um, 
Although, George did make a good point in his video. You wouldn't want to live in Harry Potter world when Voldemort is on the rise. <laughs> so like book four to book seven. <laughs> you wouldn't want to. <laughs> so, but Hogwarts is a pretty safe place, I think. So, yeah, I think either pre-Rise of Voldemort or post Deathly Hallows, I think that would be a very cool place. There must be, oh, I, I'm just thinking about it, it makes me very giddy. <laughs> Question five. Now, this is the hardest one, I think, out of all the questions, so bear with me if I deviate off the topic. I would let my Google search history be made public if it meant I could be best friends with this author. <laughs> First of all, that will never, ever happen. You would look at my Google search history and, oh my god, that would be a terrifying, terrifying location. And there's a lot of books, like authors out there, I really would want to be author, best friends with. Um, James Dawson, I've got some of the books here, like James Dawson, Sally Green, Zoe Marriott, Gareth Nix. And it's a very... I'm being selfish, I'm trying to think of places kind of authors which live in faraway countries, like Australia or America, that I would just like, right, they're my best friend, I'm going to live there. Because um, I would Skype them and I would visit them and they would pay for my flights and it would be amazing. <laughs> So, I don't know. I don't know. This one's quite difficult. I suppose... Oh, I don't know. I'm really torn over this. I'm very tempted to say James Dawson and Patrick Ness. But I don't know. This is really hard. This is really hard. But do I really want to force the world to see my Google search history? Do I? Do I? Um, let me have a wee think. I might come back to you on that one. Let me have a cup of tea and a panic, and I'll come back to you. Hang on a second. The sixth and final question of this tag is, I will donate everything I own to Goodwill if it meant I could date this book character in real life. Now, Goodwill, I think, is a charity, if I understand it right. And this question was really weird, because, hey, okay, here's the thing. A, I'm in a relationship. A very happy relationship. And last time I did a video about this, I think I listed several characters I would happily date. I would be one of those people. Um, but when I did this question, Magnus Bane was the first one that popped into my head. I don't know why Magnus Bane. But I don't know what the term is. He's... There's something about him. I imagine him very sexy on his face. It's a bit like a... Oh, what's the term? That's a term. Dilf. Dilf? For some reason I imagine him being a dilf in my head. Just this really sexy, charismatic badass. And I have a thing in books. Yeah. <laughs> Put the book down. Hide him. Walk away. Oh, I need to do other people who want to do this type. Right, let's have a thing. Anyone. If any of you want to do this, be my guest, because it's hard. Um, let me think. Uh, Stevie from Sabre Court. Uh, Hannah from Hannah's Books and Beauty. Sarah Churchill. I'm picking you as well. And I've discovered a new uh, booktube, and I don't know her name. But I know her tag, which is KAP89X. So you are doing this as well. Did I answer all the questions? Did I? I'm not sure. Oh, well, that's going to be interesting. Okay, I hope you all have a good day. I hope you keep reading. And now, uh, if you excuse me, I've got to do some speed reading because I haven't finished the bookish Brits.